let's check plug and charge. Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and uh, I stopped by one of uh, Toyota's first EVgo uh, partnerships. It's their Impact EMPACT charger program where they're funding chargers for with EVgo uh, in, in sort of uh, disadvantaged neighborhoods. It looks very similar to the GM Energy uh, EVgo partnership in in terms of the locations and you know for the most part even the site design. Uh, the one thing that I will say with Toyota though is I they're pretty short on numbers in terms of what it is that they're actually going to be funding, right? It's this one here in Sacramento at the Arden Fair Mall, uh, and then there is the one in uh, Baldwin Park. So outside of that, though, we don't, we just don't know, right? They made an announcement about a year ago. So, so it marks about 12 months since Toyota announced that they would be funding these sites, um, and these two sites from EVgo went in but we haven't really heard a whole lot more um, anywhere else in the country, how many they're gonna be funding, right? When GM Energy and EVgo partnered, uh, we had some pretty specific numbers in terms of how many they were gonna be installing. Uh, you know, if, if they were light on details, it was specific locations, stalls per location, that sort of thing. But this one, you know this this one is kind of similar to the Coddington Plaza one that uh, in Santa Rosa that I reviewed for GM Energy several years ago. Uh, in that this is one of the earlier sites, but it's definitely uh, a deviation in terms of Toyota's uh, design parameters versus GM's. Uh, this is a slightly larger site, uh, no hundred kilowatt um, all. 350 kilowatt split power, so a total of eight stalls. Uh, it's a 1.5 megawatt transformer uh, to support this. So, uh, if this is sort of their baseline, you know, design, then then uh, I, I think that it's pretty good. Uh, the one thing that I would say is, given this location, uh, where where it's sort of the extreme south end of the mall, not a whole lot going on here. Um, at this end of the mall and the people who are using and prioritizing DC fast chargers are the ones who are going to want to sort of just get in and out. So you'd want to place this closer to the types of services where you could just get in and out in a couple of minutes. Um, but I would also suggest that for these, especially like if you're going to be locating them at these large retail plazas, I think Toyota, GM Energy, EVgo, I, I think they need to start exploring a little bit more with the level two, uh, especially the 80 amp, 20 kilowatt um, level two chargers that they could put in at these locations that would you know, make a lot more sense for um, the business that's hosting them. And then just in terms of the usage for the average person, uh, and then if you are going to put in chargers like this, I, I mean, I like that they're not priority parking uh, because, you know, you're not really competing for the parking spaces. All the spaces around here are empty. Uh, there were two mach -E's when I got here. Um, so the people that were here parking in this immediate vicinity were all charging, right? Um, you know, it doesn't mean that there, there can't be some services nearby uh, because everything that you would be able to use in just a short period of time, uh, it's going to take longer than you're going to be charging more than likely to get there and get back. So, um, but that being said, I, I, I like the site. I, I think it's a, a good um, sort of doubling down by EVgo partnership with Toyota. Uh, and then, you know, I know Toyota has... I mean, I've made fun of them, you know, when they do stuff like their their self-charging EV uh, that's essentially just a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid. Um, but uh, I'm never going to criticize a company uh, for doing the right thing. And, you know, it's, it's never too late for me um, 
to start doing the right thing. So the fact that they're starting to fund EV charging, uh, you know, they have their BZ4X, and then with the the Subaru partnership, the Solterra, um, and and we kind of saw this coming with EVgo. There were some hintings at it at I believe it was a 2022 LA Auto Show uh, where you know there were EVgo charger displays at both the uh, Subaru and the Toyota um, locations in the, it, at the uh, at the auto show, so you kind of knew there was a partnership coming. Um, and then this is just and they announced it last year, like I said, that they'd start building some of these sites, and then this is really sort of showcasing it. And then of course, like I said, people have criticized the BC4X and the Solterra for their charging, uh, but Toyota also came back and updated the charging right and now um they're somewhat com you know competitive with other ev options they're not going to win a uh, cannonball run rally race but they are competent enough you'd be able to do a six seven hundred mile trip with just a three or so 30 minute charges so they they are you know, they are improving their EVs. I mean, we, we forget, like I said, I always reference this because people forget that, you know, the Tesla Model 3 could only charge at 120 kilowatts when it was first released. So um, I think we need to give some of these automakers a little bit of grace, especially with the early EVs that they release, uh, and then just sort of give them a chance to update them and make them a little bit more competitive um, you know as long as it's a a solid reliable ev out the door then i think we can you know give them a little bit of of wiggle room as they sort of improve and and nail down exactly the capabilities that they want their evs to have but that being said like you know i think this is a very Good site uh, for 350 kilowatt chargers at split power, so you could be charging eight vehicles simultaneously at a pretty decent clip. And I will say too that I think this is this is closer to at least size wise. I think what people envisioned when GM announced its uh, Pilot Flying J program, right? The, EVgo Extend GM Energy Pilot Flying J. I think this is the size of site that I think people were more envisioning and what they would be comfortable with. Um, and in fact, I think it was, I'll have to check, I think Walter had had round, rounded up that uh, graphic that was showing the flagship sites for, for GM Energy EVgo. And they were... Um, eight or 12 stalls, I believe. And they, they look kind of similar to this. I would say the one um, miss here is the pull-through parking, um, which again, though right now, Toyota isn't really offering any vehicles that tow or tow a significant enough trailer that pull-through parking is gonna be a huge deal for them and this is an urban support location, like they, they're specifying that they're trying to support these lower income disadvantaged communities. In that regard, does this fit? Yeah, it, it kind of fits that, um, that expectation, right, for what, what you would think a site would use um, or what you think the common use case would be for a site like this, no pull in parking. Um, at all or there's there's some pull in parking but no pull through parking at all um so you know it's not technically a travel corridor site though we are just a few miles off of i5 and i80 so maybe maybe you should be um it's certainly like i said it's certainly usable just not what i would consider necessarily a travel site so it's not perfect but um you know, they're making inroads now. And with Toyota being one of the largest automakers in the world, um, if they really start to get behind this, working with EVgo, uh, partnering with them to get these chargers um, into the ground in these various communities around the United States. But yeah, so I think this partnership is, you know, around the United States is going to be a very compelling one for 
people who own EVs in the city and they just want another one of these just nice, capable charging locations where they can stop by. So kudos to Toyota. Like I said, this is one of uh, the first two. The other one is in Baldwin Park in Southern California. Next time I get down to Southern California, maybe I'll stop by and check that one out. But I, I would really like to see EVgo and Toyota release at least we don't need details, but it would be nice for us to know exactly how many chargers they're funding, where they're planning to build them specifically. Sacramento um, is a very well covered city in terms of EV charging. It was part of Electrify America's Green City Initiative. EVgo has a ton of charging here. There's just a lot of charging in Sacramento. I mean, it's a capital of the state with the highest uptake of EVs in the United States. But even then, Sacramento has a decent amount of, of charging coverage. Um, I would just like to see maybe, like I said, at least some loose plans about funding and locations and numbers of chargers and maybe when we could expect them. And then, then Toyota could start building this excitement about this program that they're doing. Um, and then of course we could, uh, uh, <laughs> then, then we could of course track it, uh, like Walter on the network architect channel. So anyway, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, are you excited to see, uh, Toyota starting to get a toe <laughs> in the water, uh, in terms of EV charging, the EV charging game? What do you think of the site design, right? What do you think of four 350 kilowatt chargers with split power, eight stalls, um, you know, location wise near a mall, um, you know, not too far off of some freeways. Anyway, um, I think, uh, now I'm going to go test out my site review <laughs> map. Uh, I put a form together in Google form to, to track it. Cause I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, keen on it enough to, uh, remember my own <laughs> criteria and then still do the math. So I'll, I'm going to go ahead and do that now uh, and and try to avoid some of this rain and, and get some film of the rest of the site. So thank you for watching. <laughs>